and then I put four circles <coughs> and I put 13 in each one. And then I- Hold on, did you put the number 13 in each one? I put 13 dots in each one. Then I counted them all, and then I got four, 52 of my numbers. All right, I'm not gonna write out all these dots, but pretend there are 13 dots in the rest of these. So you added up 13 dots in circle one, plus 13 dots in circle two, plus 13 dots in circle three, plus 13 dots in circle four, and you got 52. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Did anyone do it differently? CJ. CJ, what did you do? I took four times 11. Okay, and what is four times 11? 44. Then what did you do? And then I took 44 and added four to get 48. And then what? And then I added four to 48 to get 52. All right, so CJ, explain to us why you started with four times 11 and then explain why you added four two times. Because they want you to solve four times 13. So I started with four times 11 to get 44. And then if you do four times 12, you get 48. And then four times 13 equals 52. Okay, so to clarify his thinking, because CJ's explaining it kind of fast, you have 13 times four, there's 11 of the 13 right here, right? So then there's your, right here, this four he added would be 12 times four because you're adding another four. And then this other four he added down at the bottom would be the 13th four to do 13 times four. So CJ, did you start with four times 11 because that's just a fact you already know and it made it easier for you to add the other two on? Yeah. Okay, so we, we call that like, um, using multiplication facts we already know. So CJ, some people could have done four times 10, right? If you didn't know four times 11 and then added three fours. So that's just another strategy you can use. CJ, thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. All right, we're gonna do another example. This one is 72 divided by, divided by eight. I'm going to give you guys three minutes to do that, and then we're going to share your strategies for this one as well. You guys, it makes us really happy when we look out across the board it, all, about everybody, but other than maybe two people right now, we can see is doing their assignment on their whiteboard and working to solve the problem. So thank you to the majority of you guys. It makes our hearts happy to see that almost everybody is working on these by themselves and trying to help on themselves get better at doing these kinds of problems. Alex M, it's division. No es subtracción, it's division. Try 
Got one more minute. Ms. Fleischer, did you see the chat message I sent you on here? No, I'll look right now, sorry. No, no problem, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, who would like to share their strategy? Someone I have not heard from yet today. Someone I have not heard from. I'll wait for someone to raise their hand. We need a brave soul. Corbin, what did you do? I did the circle strategy where I put the dots in it. All right, talk me through it. So I drew eight circles. Why did you draw eight circles? Because that's the number of groups. Okay, and keep then, going. And then I put dots in each one until I got up to 70. And I counted my dots to go over them twice. And I got nine as my answer. I want to clarify something, Corbin. You said you count to 70. Did, do you mean so, a different number or did you mean 70? Two. 72. Two. Why did you count to, why did you count to 72? Because that's the total. No, that's not the total. Number. That's the num. That's the highest number. Okay, we want to be careful. You were right. That's the total it starts with. We want to be careful about saying the highest number because you could have two high numbers, but it could still be multiplication, right? We call that that's the dividend. So you got an answer of nine. Bonus points for somebody not named Corbin. Who, who can tell us what that answer of nine is called? Michael. The total. Not the total. What's the answer to the division problem called? Kyrie. Ania. Uh, the products. Oh, you're so close. That's multiplication. Quotient. Okay. Quotient. That's right. It's a quotient, right? Quotient. So our quotient in that problem was nine. Did somebody do it a different way? I'll let Miss Weibel take back over. Sorry, I kind of interrupted. <coughs> Jay, how did you solve it? I I did the same as Corbin. Okay, thank you. All right, CJ, you said you did it differently. I know you already shared, but I have a feeling a lot of people did the circles. So CJ, what did you do instead? I already knew the multiplication answer. Okay, so how would you write it as a multiplication? Eight times nine. Equals? 72. Okay, so don't forget that, guys. If you can turn around and know the multiplication facts, that's a great way to understand these problems. If you're good at multiplication, but you're still trying to figure out division, you can always use multiplication to help you solve division. All right, I really am going to stop talking now and let Ms. Weibel take, care, take over the rest of the way. All right, before we move on, did anyone else do anything different? Going once. 
going twice. We are moving on. Maybe. There we go. All right. So we are looking at a word problem now. Kayla, can you read this word problem? All right, Denise, how about you? Can you read it? That I meet yourself. There are nine, wait. There are nine pencils, tables, Picnic tables. Picnic tables outside of Nora. Each picnic table can fit four students. How many students total can sit outside at the picnic tables? Thank you. Okay, someone unmute and tell me what are our important numbers in this? Nine and four. Nine and six. Nine and four. Nine and, nine and four. Nine and four. Okay, so we've got nine and we've got four. And what's the question that they're asking us? You can unmute. How uh, many multiplication can sit outside at the picnic tables? Yes, how many students total? That's important can sit outside at the picnic tables. So I heard someone say it already that it's gonna be multiplication. I think it was Jay. Jay, why is it gonna be multiplication? Because it says total. Because you're trying to figure out the total. We have nine picnic tables. It's a picnic table. Four students can sit at each of them. So we're trying to figure out how many students can sit outside at the picnic tables total. Now I'm going to give you guys like two minutes to solve this and then we'll go over it. All right, one more minute. Kyrie is ready, ready to go. Michael is ready. Okay. Hey Alexa, what's nine times four? Please say that again. Um, okay. Alex J. What did you get and how did you solve this problem? I got 36. All right, and how did you do it? I use it by uh, using uh, the circles, groups. The circles. All right, so you drew how many circles? Nine. All right. And then what? I put four in each of them. In each of, in them. You did four dots. And 
And then what did you do to get the answer? I counted all the dots. And somebody besides Alex J, what would we call this answer in a multiplication equation? I'm going to call on somebody. Sue, Urban. Sue, what do we call the answer in a multiplication problem? You've got to unmute yourself. Right. What do we call the answer to a multiplication problem? Remember we said at the beginning of the lesson, Corbin, unmute yourself and help her out. Corbin, go ahead, unmute and help her out. Um, I do the same strategy up, up on the board. Okay, no, we're asking what we call the an, an answer to multiplication problem. What is that called? The total. Well, it is the total, but that's not what we call the answer to a multiplication problem. Who can help us out? We've, guys, we've talked about this multiple times. We should know it. We talked about it at the beginning of the lesson. Dividend? Nope, not dividend. Quotient. Nope, that's division. Quotient? Division, that's division. I put the first letter on there. Help me out more than I should. Uh, multiply. Alex J, what's it called? Product. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come on, y'all. This is this should not be that complicated. We've okay. talked about it. We need more than the same three people to speak up. All right, and then I haven't put my unit yet, so I have thirty-six. What? What's my unit? Anybody can unmute and tell me. Students total. Total students. 36 students can sit outside at the picnic table that Nora. Okay, we're going to talk about what your assignment is today. So it says here that your job is writing and solving word problems. So you're writing your own word problem. You're going to tell us what kind of problem it is. And then you're gonna solve it. Okay, so I'm gonna be very explicit. That means very detailed in telling you what it is you need to do. So you're gonna go to Thursday. You're going to go to math. Creating your own problem. There's part highlighted in yellow. Um, let's see. Clay, can you read the directions to the problem? The, this right up here. Your job today is to write two story problems on your own. The problems can be either a multiplication or division problem. Then go down again for each problem. For each problem, write the word out in complete sentences. sentences. After you write the problem, explain whether the problem is multiplication or division and show how you know. Lastly, solve the problem on your own and explain how you got the answer. Example. So you're good, you don't need to read example. Excellent job, thank you, Clay. Mary Lay, how many story problems are we writing? You can show us on your fingers. We are writing two story problems. So when you turn something in, if you only wrote one story problem, you are not going to get all the points. You're writing two story problems. Everybody show us on your fingers. How many story problems are you writing today? Thank you. Two. Okay. You have to do all these things to get your 
points. So notice there's 10 points. Y'all, you get four for doing the assignment, and then you get three each for each problem. You have to do three things. So here's the example. Notice it says, Kylie is working at a flower shop. This is written by me. They give her 72 flowers to split equally into 12 vases. How many flowers will be in each vase after they are shared equally? That's step one. I'm actually writing my own problem. You do not need to use a large number like 72. You can make it smaller if you need to. Step two, you're gonna say whether or not it's division or multiplication and how you know. I said, I know my problem is a division problem because it starts with the total number of flowers and ask them, and ask them to split equally into 12 groups. That's so I've done, here's my problem. Here's the kind of problem it is. Then I go down and I answer it. The answer to my problem is six. I know the answer is six because I drew 12 vases and split 72 equally into each vase that I drew. In the end, there were six dots in each vase on my drawing. Notice how I explained exactly how I solved it. You get one point for each of those things. So if you do this with one, you miss three points because you didn't do a second one. If you do this on both, you get all your points, okay? We need to be more detailed about following directions. Two days ago, we had one and it said, make two examples and over half the class did one. And I always highlight the important parts of the directions. All right, we need to make sure we're following those directions.